Hello everyone, this is Christopher in Japan and I'm uh, taking a little hike uh, since the rain, rainy season has decided to take a short break today. Maybe we're going to have some more rain tonight. Uh, and while I'm walking on this wonderful path that I love so much as a place for me to engage in forest bathing, which I find incredibly refreshing, especially when I'm working on some intense project. And I've been working on some intense projects lately. I uh, hope to post some videos soon about some of those. Uh, but I've sort of fallen off the, or uh, gone astray from the path of posting my weekly videos. So I thought this might be a fitting location to try to do this. Um, I want to talk about the path of life, where I've come from, how I got to this place where I am right now in Japan. Um, I remember back in graduate school, uh, we had a uh, seminar that my advisor hosted uh, where we interviewed uh, the faculty of our department. It was really interesting to hear their stories about how they got there, how they ended up teaching at such a wonderful place. Um, and one of the things that kind of struck me as a common theme was how serendipity seemed to play such an important role in these lofty careers of famous Berkeley scholars. So it wasn't all like, you know, I did this, I got myself this, I uh, stamped out all the competition. It was more things just sort of fell together. And that's very much true for my own experience in Japan. Uh, things sort of fell together. I didn't really have a strong uh, capability in foreign languages or uh, what I considered to be a, a good awareness of cultural factors uh, that have played such an important role in the business relationships that I've been part of forging over the years. Um, but um, a, a series of accidents, uh, for example, uh, being in junior high school, having to learn a foreign language and the only foreign language offered was French and I was terrible at it and uh, I had some teachers who taught me uh, French with Louisiana accents. Nothing wrong with that but uh, I don't know that how far that would go in Paris. Uh, but uh, long story short I decided to escape from French in high school and I convinced them to allow me to study a computer language. Instead, gullible faculty of that uh, institution, huh? Um, so they let me do that, and for two years I happily uh, hid in a room and uh, uh, taught myself uh, assembler and some other things. Um, and then when I got to college, I wanted to learn a language because, of course, we had no requirements. So I went around and interviewed uh, faculty members and I was considering things like German since I have uh, some um, genetic origins in Germany. Um, and Asian languages were attractive to me. I went and interviewed the professor who was teaching Mandarin at the time and he told me 60,000 kanji and I figured you know with my limited capability of conjugating French verbs and uh, remembering whether a noun was masculine or feminine that 60,000 kanji were not going to be able to be stuffed down my throat. So I went and saw the Japanese uh, language instructor and he said uh, 2,000 kanji. Oh well that's much easier than 60,000. So it was kind of a no-brainer and then you know Japan of course has Godzilla and some other things and so uh, that was really uh, kind of this accident that uh, led me into Japanese. So studied started studying Japanese sophomore year in college and uh, finally got an opportunity uh, thanks to Andy Van Dam who got me an internship at IBM uh, 
right after I graduated from college to come here. And, you know, with three years of college Japanese under my belt, I thought I was a pro. So, um, even though my Japanese was incredibly rudimentary, uh, people are so kind here uh, that uh, you speak, a, it's the opposite of French, uh, at least I think for French people, where uh, if you try to destroy their language, which is admittedly, I, I might do that to somebody if they destroyed my English or something. Um, but Japanese are the opposite of that in that you speak just a few words very poorly and they compliment you and they're really nice to you. Um, so I remember going back to Yokohama where I was staying on the train alone a few times and I had to change trains in Shinbashi and I'd just get off the subway and before I got on the JR train going down to Yokohama I would just go check out some Akachochin, some bars under the train tracks and I'd meet people there and I'd get incredible practice. It would probably be much better than the laboratory where I was working. Um, but that was a wonderful experience. I came back here uh, uh, after a year of graduate school for formal language training for a year which was incredible. Yeah, uh, an experience where I started dreaming Japanese, but this was, in a, this was my summer here the first time and uh, it was an incredibly different experience. I was much more confident even though my language capability was much worse. Um, and uh, so what am I trying to say here? Uh, anyway, things sort of came together, fell together uh, in this wonderful uh, combination of things. Maybe I'll have to pick this theme up uh, since it's too long a story. But uh, thank you for watching and I hope to bring you some more interesting uh, videos in the fu near future. Uh, but uh, I thought I would get my foot in the door, get back on this path and try to show you uh, some more things, um, maybe a little bit less um, wishy-washy in the near future.